Good evening everyone and welcome back to some more what if 1 in 70 second modelling silliness and here we are starting operation domesticated swans and the idea of this is this is going to be an air mobile exercise using my newly created air mobile forces now the whole idea of this mission is to avoid another hostamel or another bridge too far um, that would be terrible so the idea is that the airmobile forces are going to seize and hold strategic airfield in africa it will be a battle group exercise so that's a third of the malagasy expeditionary force There'll be sizable assets allocated to this exercise. The oil and forces will be playing the enemy and it will be a mix of paper and combat exercises. So some war gaming and some paper exercises like a staff college uh, exercise, really. So the goal is to take and hold an airfield to bring in the main a battle group assets and then to seize a strategic location, which will be a nearby town or village, and then to exfiltrate through an amphibious exercise, which is coming later in the year. So stay tuned. A lot happening. Now, this is going to be one of the biggest exercises that I've held. And the part one of this exercise is going to really push my airmobile forces to the limit. So the whole idea is that they're going to seize and screen an airfield and this is going to involve my uh, newly finished company C assets and the anti-tank screening assets so there'll be three waves so the first wave will be to initially take the airfield with a seizing force screening force and the initial force protection assets the second wave will bring in the rest of the companies companies two and three um, that's A and B company. The light assets, more ammo and fuel and air defence systems, the NASAMs. And the third wave, and this is what I need to build, is the C-17 using my existing A400M plus another one I've got to build. And bringing in the 30 ton plus assets, setting up a forward um, arming and refuelling point and bringing in the medical services and evacuating any casualties. Now it's crucial that wave one is done correctly. Now wave one, if you've watched the film uh, when we were soldiers, or if you think back to Hostomel, uh, this is where it can very easily go wrong. Same with Arnhem. Um, really what you bring in wave one has to be able to survive on its own for a bit, but you've always got to trade off between combat power, weight and speed. If you go in too fast and too light, you don't have any combat power. If you go too combat power heavy, you add weight and cripple yourself in the lift department. So I'm going to be using a seizing company and that will have six CH-47F Chinooks, of which I've just finished four. And that will be bringing in two Vikings, two Weasel Toes and two 81 millimeter mortar teams. The anti-tank screening team which i've already covered previously will be using their four ab412 helicopters to get in and they will be bringing in some drones as well and then supporting them all and bringing in company support elements will be three ch53 dms of which i finished one which is a repaint and i need to build two and they'll be bringing in three bvs410 vikings assisting them will be four AH-1F says Cobras, upgraded Cobras. Uh, one MBB-105 CM, that's a scout helicopter, and more drones. Providing close air support will be two Hawk 128 close air support aircraft, which are here, equipped with rockets, jamming pods, and of course the cannons. And then electronic countermeasures, ESM and comms will be done by the DH6C guardrail. I'm just being interrupted by the bunnies who appear to be trying to break into this secure fenced vegetable garden. Naughty bunnies tucked up. Now wave one is crucial and it's crucial to get this right. And I've really struggled with this. Now I've just finished B 
building four new Chinooks to give me a total of six Chinooks. And these are all the CH47F models, so the latest standard, highest powered engines, radar and infrared turrets underneath on each. Um, they're equipped with the latest countermeasures. Most of them have got directed infrared countermeasures. Four have got that. And the final two from the previous builds still need to be upgraded, but they've got the rest of the chaff and flare systems. So they're very advanced. And I've got them in a mix of camouflage. So this one here is a new one, which I've done in the car key drab um, to go with the two older ones here. And then the other three new ones I've done in the new grey scheme. Uh, they've all been decaled up now. They've all got their countermeasures, wiper blades added. These are the Italeri Chinooks. So I've got three of the long range versions with the big fuel tanks. These are the MH47E kits with the later rotor blades. So three of the long range versions carrying the bulk of Company C and then three of the standard versions carrying the rest of the assets. Now, what I found in planning this is very easy to go over the weight limit, even for the Chinook. So operating in the African theater, you're still dealing with um, relatively hot conditions, uh, sometimes high altitude as well. And that limits the payload and the load that you can bring. So whereas it'd be nice to load these up to uh, the 12,000 uh, kilogram um, maximum weight, that just isn't going to happen. So I've aimed for a weight of around nine um, tons maximum for all of my helicopters, uh, 9.5 to 10 maximum, uh, to give them still a, a margin for lift and for useful payload like the minigun ammunition and fuel. Now, some of these helicopters have got the rear door guns like this one here with a uh, 50 cal. And I've modeled most of them with the ramp kind of down as they would be flying um, on this mission. Now let's talk about Company uh, C. So what I want to do is I want to be able to get a force in and I want to be able to seize this airfield. Now my um, sections are all uh, six uh, troops strong pretty much. So a platoon is 18 uh, troops. No, that's not right. Yes, it is. My maths failed me for a minute. So 6, 12, 18. So this is your standard platoon size. Each of my companies has three platoons. Now the reason that they've got six is because um, you normally have two um, or three allocated to uh, vehicle crewing and there are vehicles to follow up. So I'm using a fighting strength of six, which is quite low, but that suits the CV-90s and the boxers quite well. And uh, this is the first uh, helicopter. So we're looking at a weight of around 150 kilograms uh, to 200 max per troop. And that quickly adds up because you have to bear in mind that these troopers will be carrying uh, two 81 millimeter mortar rounds each. So this Chinook here with its 18 infantry will be carrying a quad bike internally as well. And each of these troops will be carrying as much GPMG and mortar ammunition that they can within the weight limit for the Chinook. So trying to give a nine to 10 ton max payload. The next uh, Chinook will be carrying a weasel tow. This is from Butler's printed models and that will be carrying that um, internally uh, with the 18 troops. Again, going for that nine, 10 uh, ton payload. These are three tons each for the we uh, weasel and anything that the troops can uh, grab to carry in addition, they'll be carrying with them. That's a stray uh, soldier there. And again, this last one is a reflection. This is carrying the third platoon in. Again, with a weasel internally, and all of my sections, these are mainly Elheim miniatures, Caesars and uh, Orion uh, IDF figures. Um, but they're carrying uh, at least three saws. Uh, that's 5.56 uh, minimize and it, it's sort of three GPMGs as well. Although there's a minimize at the back. But um, the idea is that they've got a lot of firepower that they can put down. They've got a lot of... Um, 
underslung grenade launchers, uh, javelins, cargo stav, and laws. So they've got uh, enough combat power to seize what they need to. The next uh, line of Chinooks, and these are um, the standard range versions. Um, this one is carrying a BVS 410 Viking. Those are 8.5 tonnes, uh, so well within the underslung payload limit. And then just a mortar squad of six people, one with a stinger, uh, 81 millimeter mortar. So around the 10 ton uh, maximum payload there. Same thing for this Chinook, it's exact replica. These are the APC BVS 410s from Butler's printed models. These are the resin ones, very nice. And again, a stinger and a team of six. The last Chinook is bringing in something different. Now this is from eBay. This is a sort of a railway model. This is a small mini digger. Now, one of the problems when you're bringing in um, acids which are light is you don't have engineering. You mostly have a chainsaws, explosives, and stuff like this. But this is well within the payload uh, under slung for a Chinook. So it can bring that in. Um, maybe one to two tons of ammunition for the mortars and for the troops and then it's bringing in some engineers so this one's got a tail on uh, mine detector device this one's on his um, belly probing for mines and then four additional sappers um, so they can use the digger to clear out obstacles if there's anything bigger that needs blowing they would be using explosive but it's good to have a bit of handy lightweight plant i think so this is company c this is the initial wave the six chinooks which will be going in to seize the airfield uh, they'll be screened by the anti-tank screening unit which will also come in on wave one and then i'll get to the ch-53s when i built them let me know what you think uh, comments and feedback welcome take care goodbye